Pluto to exercises seven and uh, here we start to look at some um, issues pertaining to polyphony. We've already looked at some uh, and a kind of a polyphony cludge if you like with the um, uh, with the I think exercises six C um, and the kind of clatter um, development thing which I I uh, I talked about, but uh, here we'll look at polyphony as it pertains to a synthesis engine. Um, not that there should really be any difference. You can you can still use the same principles when um, developing something for sampling, um, but that's that's just what I've chosen to do here. Um, <clears throat> so we'll start with uh, a monophonic um, synth, a very basic one. Uh, we have uh, our keyboard case slider at the top um, coming out the left hand side of course is the uh, note output or the note number uh, which is converted to a frequency and is controlling the cycle object so it's producing a sine wave um, and then that goes into a multiplication object which is being controlled by the right hand outlet of the case slider which is giving us velocity divided by 127 which gives us a value between 0 and 1 depending on how hard I hit the key and of course that's multiplying the output from cycle um, so that's you know that that works, but like I say, will the likelihood is you'll want to be able to have more than one voice happening concurrently. Um, so I suggest uh, in the exercises that we take the main part of that engine and we encapsulate it. So if I unlock the patch and select that section, go to Edit and Encapsulate then it uh, is put into a, a patcher uh, object for us. Um, and we will, there are a couple of issues with regards to that which we'll need to look at. Um, one of them is that, well basically we'll be making uh, several of these patcher objects. In fact I'm going to uh, actually name it something, call it a voice. Um, and we're going to we're going to have several of them, just as we had several uh, voices for the um, for the for the clatter model. Um, but you'll notice that this time, instead of just having one bit of information that we're sending to that uh, to that sub patch, we've currently got two. We've got the note number and we've got the velocity. Last time, if you remember, it was simply the um, uh, the the name of the uh, file that we wanted the groove object to read, or the, sorry, the name of the buffer we wanted it to read from. This time it's the, you know, two bits of information. Well, it's much, much more efficient if we only have one. Um, because we need, but we need both bits of information because we need the, uh, what will be our voice to understand when to start the note and when to stop it. So it needs to be able to receive the velocity information. It needs to be able to receive the velocity information of above a one and above to start the note and a zero to uh, shut it up. Um, so we'll come to that in a minute. Um, the other part of, uh, well, the, ne the next slide on here um, is a, a little interlude just telling you that the case slider has two modes. Current, uh, up to now we've been looking at the monophonic mode, uh, which is where one note is permitted at a time but there is also a polyphonic mode where you can switch notes on and off by clicking them once you turn them on, by clicking them again you turn them off. So I'm going to go into polyphonic mode and to do that I need to go into the inspector window and choose uh, polyphonic here. So that's fairly easy and that's about all there is for that slide. <coughs> so again, yeah, to, to uh, ensure efficiency what we're going to do is to uh, send the both note number and velocity information as a single message. So to do that we need to um, use uh, pack the information into a list before we send it in. Which of course I'm being over concerned about neatness here. Um, and then in within the patcher, the voice patcher, we need to be able to unpack that information, so we'll do that here. So the, the end result is exactly the same, 
we have two bits of information coming into the, well, one into the, the M2F object to convert to a frequency and the other one into this divide by 127 so that we can control the volume. But we only need one inlet. The other one is now redundant, so we can get rid of it. Um, so that means um, that we can duplicate that voice uh, to give us several voices. And like I said before, we could have done something like, you know, well, we could ask what's wrong with the following. If I were to simply connect them like that and then these outlets into the, um, the output like that, it's not ideal because, well, in fact, it's completely useless because basically any, any note that I press here is simply going to trigger all five voices um, and we'll get uh, just a louder sound than we would have done otherwise. So that's no good. What we need is a way to distribute the information so that when I press one note it sends that information, the note and velocity information to one voice. I press another note, it sends the information to a, a, another voice. Press a third note, send it to a third voice and so on. And again we looked at a, a way of doing something like that with the uh, clatter model. Um, but we're going to use a slightly different way this time. Um, it's a, it, there, there are similarities, but it's a, uh, a better way for the purposes of what we're doing. Um, last time, if you remember, we used a counter object to count through the voices. This time we don't want to do that. The problem with doing that is that once you get to voice, uh, once you get to having pressed five notes down, um, <coughs> uh, it goes back to the first one, which means if you had something in that first voice, it would be overridden by what comes in next. Uh, we're going to look at an object now which um, accounts for voices for you, uh, and that's quite handy. Um, so we will move to the next slide and have a look at this poly object. So I'm going to um, put this up here. Oops, put that up there for a minute. 